There was kind of a lot of information to present here with the building of the doghouse, so I broke it up into two videos. This is part one of two. This is the finished doghouse. This big door is big enough that the generator can fit into the doghouse through it. And the generator is too big to fit through any of the other four openings, which are for ventilation. And the doghouse will sit on the back of the boat and provide shelter for the generators to keep it out of the rain. Also makes it more difficult to be stolen. So these are just four rectangles of the honeycomb core, the NIDA core. And they're just sitting on each other at the moment. The only thing holding the structure together is that band of blue painter's tape around the edge. And I've cut out a little channel along each corner and laid in some quarter round molding that I got from Home Depot. I used a table saw to make a cut into the panel there and there and took out just a little notch of it big enough for the quarter round. And this is so that when I lay fiberglass it can go around a curved edge because glass will not go around a 90 degree corner. The glass just won't bend around the corner and you'll get a bubble underneath that you have to sand out and redo. So now I'm actually turning this bunch of panels that are just leaning against each other into a solid structure. I've catalyzed some resin and once the catalyst is mixed in really well I've added a thickening agent and what I'm gonna do is put a teaspoonful of that approximately in each corner of the box and basically just glue the panels together at the corner I mean if you were welding these would be the tack welds to hold everything in place so that you can continue here I'm lifting the one side in order to get some of the resin underneath the corner there. Um, the tape is still holding the box together but it did let me lift the panels just an inch or so to get resin underneath. So I continue working my way around, getting all corners of the box, and then I let it sit for that resin to harden. And the next step is fairing compound. Um, I'm using it to fill in the little cavities at the edge of the panels where the cells of the core are exposed and open. Um, this part where I'm working right now, well, was working, is going to be the bottom. Um, I've got the quarter round moldings at each corner except for the four corners that where the sides of the box meet the bottom. And so the bottom is just going to, glass is just going to go straight down to the bottom and not wrap around the edge. I'm going to leave the bottom the way it is um, with that furry texture of the nidacore exposed. And that will help me glue, well, it will help the doghouse adhere when I glue it to a counter on the back of the boat. This side that I'm working on right now 
is the corner between the side which is on top and the bottom of the doghouse which is facing me and I don't know if the camera picks it up here the next shot will show it better but the fairing compound you can only work with it for a few minutes and then it starts little clumps of it start to harden and it's impossible to make a smooth surface at that point you're done um this is early you can see how even with just resin holding the corners of the box it's now solid enough that i can pick it up and turn it over and start fairing the other side and so the the fairing compound is very smooth at the moment and it spreads easily now when i come over to work on this side it's starting to harden up a bit already it it resists smoothing a bit and there's little chunks harden ahead of the rest of it and leave a lumpy texture like that and if you're running the trowel along a lump like that will just drag through the smooth stuff and leave a little hollow there that you're gonna have to come back and fill in anyway so when the fairing compound starts to get lumpy or looks like it's starting to harden you're done you're better off to just go mix a fresh batch and start again now I've catalyzed some resin and I'm painting it on the side here and what will be the top which is the side facing the camera um, unfortunately I didn't get any video of me laying the fiberglass on the box um, there's nothing that special to it I I cut a big rectangle that would go over the side and then the top and I'd stick it on the box I'd wait a while for the resin to get hard enough to hold everything in place and then I'd turn the box and then do the top and another side and then the top and the back so in the end there were three layers on the top and one layer on each side this is the fairing compound that I use it's like Bondo but it's maybe a bit lighter and it hardens quick so mix small batches I've got a lump about the size of a golf ball and it starts out fairly thick like this and what I've done is added one teaspoon of resin to the fairing compound and you can see as the resin mixes in it gets a lot smoother it flows more like whipped cream or cake frosting so you don't catalyze this like um, the resin or the gel coat it'll harden before you through mixing here I'm using just two drops of resin for this golf ball sized amount of fairing compound if this was resin I'd probably use one cc or two I don't know what two drops are but probably less than a tenth of a cc and I don't know if you can see this very well there's a slight color change that happens as the resin is mixed in this goes from like a very very bright pink to more of a brownish um, when the catalyst is mixed in see I've I've got gel coat on here already I've already fared it in once and I tried to skip ahead to the next step too soon 
and once the gel coat was on I could see rough spots it's it's high at the sides where the walls are supporting and sort of cupped in on the top and what happens is I'll sand and I'll sand through at the edge but I won't have sanded all the rough stuff out in the middle and sometimes you have to get a layer of gel coat on before you can see that you've moved ahead too fast now smooth there's a technique that seems to work best for me smoothing this on I smooth it on with the trowel flat like that and I'm pushing down quite a bit and this lets me smooth run the fairing compound across the whole top of the doghouse then I come back and I remove the excess while here I'm pushing down and I'm going to catch the fairing compound that's been squeezed past that curved edge but usually when I'm going to here again I'm pushing down to, to smear it on all the way across and then it, see it's when I start here, when I want to remove it I'm not pushing down I'm using the very edge of the trowel as opposed to earlier while I was trying to get it spread all the way to the end I was kind of using the flat of the trowel and pushing down you may find different techniques work good for you but I'm sharing what seemed to have worked for me now you, here I've gone through this again and I've sanded through at the corner and I'm still a little bit rough here although I sanded through there and I'm starting to sand through there although it's rough there rough there so there will be another layer of fairing compound goes on there's nothing you can't fix and it helps to be patient if you see you're sanding through you're gonna have to go back a step before continuing on I would have to lay in tons and tons of gel coat to fill in that rough stuff here um, is a piece that I've done with the gel coat and after four or five layers of rolling on gel coat I get a rough finish like what was on the top there and the other half of it that's on the top now I've sanded and I don't want to sand down to a smooth finish while I'm building up thickness you can see I've left the little hollows the lowest parts I've knocked the rough stuff off the top but I've left the very lowest parts there as an indicator to tell me that I'm getting close to sanding through I've removed all of this rough stuff and I'm down to a fairly smooth finish here I'll try and explain what happens um, I roll on a layer and it's got some roughness to it and I roll on another layer and it exaggerates the terrain the highs get pulled up higher with the roller and the lows don't get filled in quite as much there I'm adding material to the lows but not as much as to the highs so I wanna come in again and hit it with the sander 
and now I get something like this flat on top but I still have the lows and now I'm going to layer in some more gel coat and it does make the highs high again but the and the lows aren't filled in as much with as much material as gets added to the highs but the bottom of the lows are a bit higher than they were the previous round and so I just keep doing this building up four five six layers and then I sand down and I want to see the very deepest parts um, of the hollows each time as an indicator. The, this is after just rolling five or six layers of gel coat on. It'll be rough like that. And this is what it looks like once I've knocked it down and I'm ready to put on another layer of gel coat. And to make sure that you don't sand through you want to stop here and then repeat this process several times before trying to sand through the grits and get a shiny finish. This is a time lapse. I actually laid in some blue on top of the white and you could see how I was sanding through leaving white in the high spots. Now you never want to let your sander tip up on edge. You want to keep that sander flat. It's very tempting to let the sander sit up on the edge because it'll if you're trying to get through a lump, sand off a lump or something, it'll cut much quicker on edge like this, but you will leave a hollow spot that you're going to come back and sand out later, fill in later, and then sand. So you want to keep the sander flat. I learned this the hard way. And just go over it and over it and over it until you've got what you need knocked down, knocked down. So, Teal from Onboard Lifestyle gave me this tip. I'm cutting the straight sections with a circular saw because, well, that lets me do plunge cuts and it also is a better tool for cutting a straight line. Once I've got my straight lines cut, I can come back with a jigsaw and cut the curved parts at the corner with a saw that works good for the curved parts. There you go. Circular saw for the straight cuts, jigsaw for the curved parts. Now I've filled in the edge of this panel with fairing compound to fill in the little hollow spots where the cells of the core are exposed. And I've, it's added so much weight to each of these doors that I think that's a mistake. And so I'm using a chisel to remove all the fairing compound and I'm going to come back and do this a better way. And to see that, you should tune in to part two of this doghouse build.